Okay then, so in this lesson, I'm gonna talk about how we can create getters in Pinya. But first of all, what is a getter and why would we use one? Well, a getter is a special type of function in most state management solutions that does pretty much what it says it does. It gets something. And that something is the state or a part of the state. Now, if we can easily just access the state directly from the store in our view components, why would we then want to create getter functions to do essentially the same thing? Well, the thing about getter functions is that they can package up some manipulation logic to alter exactly what values are returned to us. For example, I could have a getter which gets me all of the tasks where the isFav property is true. So it just gets me the favorite tasks. Or I could have a getter which gets me all the tasks but returns them just as an array of titles instead of objects. So getters have this ability of manipulating the data a little bit before they return the values. And the state itself is never changed this way directly. We basically just return a new value inside a getter based on the state. So in terms of view terminology, these are a little bit like computed properties, right? So for our store, I'd like to be able to make a getter that returns all of the favorites. So the way we do this is by first of all, making a getters property down here. So getters like so, and this is an object. And inside here, we can have different getter functions. So I'm gonna create one called faves, and it's a function, remember? So we have a function and it's gonna return a value to us. So when we then use this faves getter in the future, it's gonna return a specific value to us. Now, what I want to do is return a filtered version of this tasks array where the is fave property is true. So I will say return, and then to get access to the state, I can say this, and this refers to the state object right here. And then I can say dot tasks, which is the tasks property. So we have an array and we want to filter this. And by the way, the filter method is non-destructive. It doesn't actually change this original array. All it does is return a new array based on this array. And that's what we're returning right here. So I wanna filter through that array and fire a function for each one. And each time I fire a function as an argument, we take that current task. So first this one, then this one. And basically we want to return true inside this function if we wanna keep that particular task in the array and return false if we want to filter it out. So all I need to do is say t dot is fave because that's gonna return true if is fave is true. And in that case, we wanna keep it in the array and it's gonna return false if is fave is false. And then we're returning that new array right here. And it's just gonna be an array of objects or tasks where the is fave property is true therefore. So we have this getter called faves and now we can use that inside our components. So let's just do a little example. So what I'm gonna do is actually copy this thing right here and I'm gonna paste it down below. And what I shall do is say, instead of cycling through task store dot tasks to cycle through all the tasks, I can cycle through task store dot faves like that. And we don't need to invoke it. We don't need to do that. It knows that this is a getter and it's gonna to return to us this filtered array. Now there should only just be one object inside this because we're just after the faves. What I will also do is have a p tag for each one. So I'll do a p tag here to say all tasks and then a p tag down here to say fave tasks like so. All right, so if I save this now, we can see that in the browser we have all the tasks and then just the fave tasks as well, which is that one single one. So this is working. So this is cool, it's all working, but I don't wanna show both of these lists at once. I wanna show one at a time. So basically I wanna give the user the ability to toggle between seeing all the tasks or just the favorite tasks. Now the way we're gonna do this is by having some kind of little filter nav with two buttons. A user clicks on a button to see all tasks and a user clicks on a different button to see just the favorite tasks. So what I'm gonna do is come down here inside the setup method, I'm gonna create a new ref. So I'll say const filter, and that's what I'm calling the ref is equal to ref and we want to import this. So let me click on that and you'll see it imports it right at the top over here, import ref. And then the initial value of this is going to be all. So this is gonna to toggle between all and faves. And then when the value is all, we're going to show this one to show all the tasks. 
And when the value is faves, we're going to show this one to show just the favorite tasks. Does that make sense? So we need to return this ref down here, this filter, and then up here, I want to do a v if on each of these things, this one and this one. So let's do a v if right here, v if, and we only want to show this if the filter value is triple equal to all, which it currently is by default, right? Now I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it down here. And I only want to show this one where we're outputting the favorites if the value of this is faves. So now we have that in place, so we're only showing one at a time, but we now also need to give the user the ability to toggle between the two. So let's up here create a filter nav. So filter, and then underneath that, we'll do a nav with a class of filter, and inside that, we'll do two buttons. So the first button is going to say all tasks, and we want a click event on this. So we'll say at click. And when a user clicks on this, we want to set the filter value equal to all. So we can just say filter is equal to all when we click on that. Let me duplicate that. And then we'll just change this to fave tasks and change this to fave. So when we click on this button, the filter value becomes fave. So we're toggling between those two values. And when that happens, we're going to therefore toggle between showing this or this, dependent on that value. I hope that makes sense. So let me just save this and preview in the browser. All right then, so we can see those buttons right here and by default we see all tasks because remember the default value of that ref was set to all and when that's the case, we show the list with all of the tasks. Now, if I click on this and update that ref to fave, then we're only showing the favorite tasks. I can toggle this back to all and so forth. So this is working. Now it looks crap, so we're gonna style it later on. And also what I'd like to do is show the total number of tasks right here and the total number of favorite tasks right here. And to do that, we're gonna to need to make two more filters as well. So let's start by just adding in the CSS for that filter. Dead quickly, I'm gonna paste these in from my repo. So the filter itself, which remember if we go back over here is this nav. We say the width is 640 pixels, but imagine at the top and bottom and text align right. So the buttons are all the way on the right. And then each button inside those, we style as well down here. And we say display inline block, margin left set and pixels to give each one a bit of breathing room. Background of white, the border is two pixels and gray. And the border radius is four pixels, a bit of padding, cursor pointer, font size 0.8 M's and the font, oops, I've done that twice. Okay, so we'll choose font size 1 M. Let's not have duplicate properties. All right, so now we have the styles, but before we preview this again, what I'd like to do is make two more getters. So at the top of this list right here, where we currently have this paragraph tag, we wanna say how many tasks we have in total right here. So I need to create a getter to get us that number. And down here, I wanna output how many favorite tasks we have in total. So I need to create a getter for that as well. So let's go back to the task store and create two more getters. So I'm going to do the fave count first of all. So we're going to count up all of the favorites. And inside here, we're going to return and we want to say this to access the state dot tasks. And we're going to use the reduce function, which basically works on an array and we cycle through the array. We can basically count each item in the array and then it reduces it to a single figure or a single value, which is going to be a number, the amount of items in the array. So what I'm going to do is fire a function for each one. And inside this function, we need to return something. So what I'm going to do is return P, which is basically the previous value and the current value. Now inside here, we need to return something. And I'm going to say, look at the current value. So whatever we're currently iterating, right? And we want to see if that is a favorite because we only want to add one to the total, this thing right here, when it is a favorite. So we'll say C dot is fave, and then we're going to use the ternary. Now, if that's true, if it is a favorite, we want to take P and we want to add one to it. So P plus one, and we're returning that, okay? That's the value we're returning, P plus one. Now, if it's not true, then we just want to return the current value of the previous. Uh, values. That's kind of like an ongoing value. As we cycle through each one of these things, we're updating this basically. And if it's a favorite, we're adding one to it. If it's not a favorite, we're not doing anything. We're just returning P as it is. So 
that's pretty much all we need to do. And also as a second argument to this reduce function, we need to set an initial value to P, which is zero to begin with. Does that make sense? So for every favorite that we have, we're adding one to P and that is gonna return us the number of favorites. All right, so I also want one for the total count right here. So that's also going to be a function. And this time I'm gonna show you how to use an arrow function right here. So we say colon and then parentheses and then the arrow like so. Now, the only difference between using an arrow function right here and not is that we can't use this inside this function now because of the way the arrow function handles the this keyword. Because this in previous ones like here referred to the state, this does not refer to the state inside arrow functions. Instead, what we need to do is take the state as an argument inside this function, and then we can use that. So all I want to do is return the state dot tasks dot length. So that's pretty simple enough, right? The length of the tasks. So we have those two getters, and now we can use both of those inside this component. So what I'm going to do is say right here, you have, and then we need to output the count. And that's the total count because this is all of the tasks. So we'll say task store dot, and what do we call it? Total count, total count tasks left to do. And then I'm gonna copy this and paste it down here. And this is gonna be fave count. I think that's what we called it, fave count. Let's have a look. Um, yep, fave count. So you have that many faves left to do. All right then, so now we can save this and preview. All right, and in the browser, we can see you have two tasks left to do. And if we click on the faves, which by the way, looks a bit better over here, then we can see we have one faves left to do. So that's all working. Now we've created three getters. We've created one to get us all the favorite tasks and then two more to get us the total tasks and the total number of favorite tasks.